Hi everyone and welcome, my name's John and today I want to cover off some super simple Python projects for those of you out there that feel like they are ready to get going and write something useful in Python using the knowledge they've gained. It's really important for the learning processes that you, that you keep writing code, keep encountering problems and finding your own solutions for them. You'll learn much quicker this way, especially learning by doing, writing applications and scripts that are meaningful to you or useful to you in some way will then definitely greatly accelerate your learning uh, a process and help you get to where you want to be. So what is a beginner project really and how much do you need to know to be able to do these? Uh, well, the way I define a beginner project is something that should be accessible to most people. Um, say that you've done a tutorial series on, online or you've, or you've gone through your first book in Python and you've started to understand the basics. These are the sort of projects that I think would be a good logical next step for you. You will need to have a reasonably good grasp on the basics, like importing libraries and modules, storing data in variables and basic loops, uh, and working with lists and dictionaries. Without that you really are going to struggle, so if you're not up to speed on those or you think you've still got a little bit to learn, definitely go away and do those first before coming back to here. There's loads of good resources out there, YouTube videos or PDFs or all sorts of things, so make sure you get the basics down solidly and then come back and try one of these projects out for yourself. And lastly, don't be afraid to Google things that you, you know can be done but you aren't quite sure how. If you're not quite sure of the syntax of something or you're not quite sure why your loop or your dictionary isn't working the way you thought it was going to, it's much easier to be able to ask sort of more targeted questions as opposed to asking, oh, how do I write this? You want to, you want to be able to ask, why am I getting this error? This is my code. And when you get to that point, you'll find that your, your knowledge is really starting to expand and you, you will be able to uh, achieve a lot more things because you can answer, because, sorry, you can ask those really specific targeted questions. So don't be afraid to get on Google, know what you need to find out and, get, and have a look through and see if you can find the answer there. So I wanted these projects to be as accessible as possible. Um, and to do that, I tried to, create, tried to keep to some strict criteria. Um, the first of which was it needed to be simple yet challenging. It would be no good if it was too easy or too hard. Um, and also wanted it to be something that could be quite short and easy to be done, easily done in an afternoon or an evening's worth of coding for a beginner. So you could come in after your day's work and, and do your daily chores and then sit down and actually achieve something in one session as opposed to, sit, as opposed to having to sit down over several sessions and jump in and out. I wanted to be able to get some kind of instant results to keep you going. The second criteria was to make sure these had a good introduction to you for the most popular packages that you might run into. Um, learning what Python can do for you using this, the standard library and also the community driven library is really important. Once you understand what you can actually achieve with it, you can go on and then build your own apps and do your own projects a lot easier. It's good to have a good exposure to, to a lot of the common libraries at the very beginning, even if you only use them for very, very small parts of their functionality. Um, and I'll go into these in, in a little bit. The third thing is for them to have some kind of real world application. I think that if you can do something that's meaningful to you or you can see that would actually be useful out there in, in the real world, it helps you stay focused and stay engaged. Um, and to be able to, to work on something and then have something at the end of it that you might actually use in your day-to-day -day life, in your, in your personal life or in your office job or whatever, is it, really useful and will help you stay engaged in the, in the projects themselves. And lastly, I wanted these all to be a good base for you to be able to expand on, to be able to write a good solid core script and then come back to it later and then maybe add some new features or change it slightly. And it's also a good way to see how well you're coming along in your learning process to be able to go back and critique your own code. So make sure you, you do it and you see it all the way through and you finish it and upload it to your GitHub or, or save it on your computer even and then be able to come back to it at a later date and to either build upon it, expand it, add some features or just to see how far you've come. The first project is some kind of basic web scraper. Now web scraping is a way to extract the information from a website and then structure it or manipulate it into something that is more useful to us. It's used a lot in the real world to create big data sets. Um, by utilising the HTML tags and the elements um, within the source of the website we can select only the information that we want to save uh, without having to manually sift through it all. 
A good way you can find out where it is, is is by view source or by the inspect element on your browser and you can see where each little bit of information is saved. We can then pass that and save it and extract it and get, on, get out of it what we need. So what we want to achieve in this script is to download the HTML data from a website uh, and pass it. The modules we're going to use are requests, which will download the information, and Beautiful Soup 4, which we're going to use to pass the HTML through. And we might use pandas at the end as well to, uh, to store the data in, in a data frame and then we can do what with it from there what we want. So using requests and Beautiful Soup 4 to, to do it this way is kind of the quickest and the easiest way, but it's also the most restrictive. A lot of websites have their content hidden behind some kind of script, JavaScript or whatever, and you can't actually access it just by using requests. Um, we're going to go ahead and, and do it the easiest way first and see where we get to, and then later on I'll show you how to use Selenium and Beautiful Soup to extract all of the data. Now, scraping is, is a super useful skill and very practical sort of, sort of skill to have. Um, it's really good for getting information from the web where there isn't an API available. But be careful not to flood too many requests to other people's servers because you might find yourself getting IP banned or whatever. It is particularly useful in older websites that don't have an API, um, like local sports teams, websites and things like that. Um, and when you use pandas at the end as well, you'll get a really good introduction to how powerful pandas can be and how useful it can be for you. So it's definitely worth doing. My favorite ideas for web scraping is so uh, maybe scraping prices from Amazon or maybe local sports teams for results or other, other web stores for our product information and prices. The second project is an image downloader. Now we can take what we talked about in the first project by scraping and we can get all of the A tags and the image URLs and then download all the files. This has got really good and act proper actual real world usage. Um, you can think about maybe downloading lots of different wallpapers or maybe saving a load of product images, maybe your clients migrating systems and they need all of their product images backing up from the websites or something along those lines. So this is a really kind of good skill, a good, good useful um, script to be able to write. Um, we're also going to use the OS module as well that will introduce you to using Python to move around your file system and create directories and save files, etc, etc. Definitely start simple on this one and maybe just download one image at a time from a URL and then move on to, as we talked about, using the HTML and passing through that to get all of the image URLs from, from a web page and downloading and saving those. The third project is very closely linked to the other two and it's an image resizing script. This is a really useful thing to be able to do and have saved uh, and, and, and work with if you ever take pictures with your camera or you ever work with pictures on the web you're going to need to resize them all and to be able to do it in bulk will just save you an absolute ton of time so it's definitely worth learning and writing your own version of this to fit your needs. So again this fits into our sort of our criteria of, of real world application. Um, the Python library you're going to want is called Pill or Pillow I think is the new version. Uh, so go and grab that through pip and have a look and see what you can do and, and, and work out how you can change the image dimensions, the size, uh, maybe shrink it down to a specific file size and file type that you need for your format, for your web application or whatever, um, and go from there. So there we have it. There's three super simple scripts in Python that are, are accessible to anyone with basic skills. Uh, they link together well and have loads of room for expansion. Maybe one of them has real world uses for you and you can tailor the idea into something more custom and save a bunch of time at work and learn some Python along the way. Cheers guys, bye.